Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Now, we as a nation are looking for economic prosperity. As always, we are sitting on a gem and unable to see or have the capacity to mine its benefits. I'm talking about none other than that pile of sand near Gulf is Green, which is supposed to be our financial city. Now, since uh, the government of former President Mahindra Rajapaksa, consecutive governments have failed to move an inch in making any progress on this massive project that would literally put us out of this crisis that we are in. Now, this is Sri Lankan mastery, my dear friends. Not to see the truth in its entirety, but to fall for the bull pushed by countries like the United States. Remember the former ambassador of the US, um, she was talking about how black money would come into South Asia because of the financial city. So can we harness the benefits of this project? I mean, as a nation, do we even have the capacity or the power to do so? Johnny Minau is the director of the Belt and Road Initiative Sri Lanka, Yasiru Ranaraja. Thank you very much, uh, Yasiru, for your time. Now, what is the BRI's uh, or the uh, Belt and Road Initiative's future in Sri Lanka amidst this uh, ongoing economic crisis? Yes, thank you, Mahesh. Thank you for having me. Uh, the BRI initiative or the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, which was initiated back in 2014, uh, back in 2014, specially mentioned Sri Lanka to be his one of one of his main uh, partners, and Sri Lanka was one of the first countries to recognize the Belt and Road Initiative back then. So back in the time, China invested uh, on the port city and the Hambantota port as their main uh, main nodes in the Belt and Road Initiative. So I believe they will continue to flow investments uh, to develop these projects. And uh, being said that uh, the port city of Colombo has already met all the timelines which they were planning. And also the Hambantota, Hambantota port and the industrial zone is now being completed in a, in a very ma mass scale. And many companies, not only from China, around the world have been present at the Hambantota port. Apart from that, uh, in this year, the Presid President Xi Jinping announced that the Belt and Road Inici Initiative will extend towards the Global Development Initiative and Global Security Initiative. So the whole Belt and Road Initiative will work as a block of trade. So many think BRI is uh, it's sort of a, a, a replacement of the existing trade system, which is very wrong. I believe Belt and Road Initiative or the BRI is a different trade block which they want to create an alternative way to the to the uniform way of uh, doing uh, alternative way towards the uniform way of uh, which we are doing trade so it's sort of decentralizing the global trade routes and and making an anti fragile system which which we can have if one system fails we will have another one if that fail we have another one so it's a very successful initiative so we can't see the the main objectives or the main uh, uh, developments of it still, but I believe in the coming years it will have more benefits to many people around the world. Understood. Uh, now, yesterday the United States has uh, increased its influence in the region and we don't uh, see a Chinese retaliation per se. Does that mean that China has written off their BRI investment in Sri Lanka and moved past Sri Lanka, allowing the US influence to grow? Uh, that is also a misconception which is widely circulated around the world by, by mainstream media. China and Sri Lankan trade relations go back to the over 2000 years we have trading with China throughout all the regimes or the kingdoms we had in Sri Lanka. China was one of the main trading, but you take Parakram Bahu the Six, you take Parakram Bahu the Great, all these areas, the, the most uh, flourishing times of Sri Lankan economy, China was the main trading part. So this is the era of China and uh, that have been uh, that have been heard by the international community and the, the global order is now threatened uh, to see what they can do. So China is always uh, not a conflict uh, driven uh, policy uh, nation. They always want to create uh, conflict prevention methods. So I believe whatever the U United States or the or the other Western countries would implement to to uh, downgrade the BRI or the Chinese trade initiatives in Sri Lanka, I think it will eventually uh, decrease. And uh, being said that China and U United States are one of the main trading partners also, and through BRI, they are about uh, the growth of BRI trade have grown from one trillion to two trillion. 
uh, within 10 years. So it, it, the, it's a 8% growth over the years. So I don't see any anything damaging the system, but we will hear a few stories here and then. But uh, I believe China will always study the movements of these threats and always create alternative ways to tackle it without beginning conflicts, uh, without harming or bringing proxy wars around. That's the main focus of, of the BRI. It's a, it's a global research program as well. So we do research on which areas can we prosper without bringing conflicts to people, without bringing damages to their uh, local system. So that is why we stand on a, on a global principle, which we call the win-win scenario. And the next principle we stand along is non-interference in other countries' internal affairs. These are the guiding principles of BRI. So that being said, I believe it would have a, a bright future for Sri Lanka. Indeed, uh, yes, there's a lot more to talk about, but uh, sadly we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, that was the director of the Belt and Road Initiative, Sri Lanka, Yasiru Rana Raja. Let's take a short commercial break. I'll be back with the closing.